On this episode of Captain's Tales, we're deep in the Florida Everglades Canal System, angling for largemouth black bass and colorful exotic peacock bass. Probably shouldn't have used the bigger rod. And that's what we come all the way down here for. Today we're in the Florida Everglades catching peacock bass. Throughout maritime history, there have been experts on the water who knew how to navigate and locate their bounty. These individuals held the secrets to where, when, and how. This still holds true today. Get ready for an angling experience filled with sea secrets, fantastic fishing, and great destinations. For on this show, it's only the captain and the camera. On this charter, our captain is Josh Greer, and we are portaging a specially designed boat that can be pulled in and out of the canals to access fishing areas that rarely see an angler. The pristine freshwater Everglades canals offer multitudes of angling targets from colorful panfish to the exotic peacock bass. These canals have limited fishing pressure due to their remote access. Captain Josh's father designed this mobile aluminum fishing machine to be perfectly balanced while pushing it on the folding wheels that enable this boat to move freely out of one canal to another. Captain Josh Greer is a fourth generation native Floridian and guide who has spent most of his life fishing and hunting in the expanse of Florida wetlands and woodlands. The Everglades is a unique ecosystem like no other area of the world. Nice large mouth. It's fat fish. Look how fat that fish is at the tail. A stud. All right. 
Large numbers of bass can be caught throughout the irrigation canal system. That's what we came down here for. Not a big one, but it's a start. Pretty fish. You good? We just caught the first little one there. Hopefully there should be more. Catch some other stuff. Peacock bass, cichlids, largemouth bass. Working down this canal bank, the canal kind of slopes off and the fish tend to sit on that ledge. But there's one there. <laughs> Peacock, little one. Cichlid, big one. If you notice, that plug and that fish look a lot alike. <laughs> they will eat their babies. That's what we came all the way down here for. As you notice today, we didn't see any other boats. We didn't see anybody else fishing. This is about as remote as it gets. This is, uh, if you will, the Amazon of Florida. Um, it's very difficult to get down here. You know, we have to winch the boat out of the, out of the water, put it back in the water on the other side of some, some water control structures. Uh, nobody wants to work that hard, but so as you've seen, it's, fish, I was using it's worth the rod and reel. Um, floating weight forward line. And the fly I'm using is Joe Mahler's straw boss. Joe's a good buddy of mine. He tied these flies. We came down here and used them. These fish can't stand them. Look at it. How chewed up it is. The fish really love these flies. Uh, it imitates a little bait fish. It's got the orange belly. Looks like all the little baby cichlids and little Oscars and all kinds of, you know, baby peacocks. 
everything eats these. The spinning rods we're using today are just your everyday seven foot medium action rods, 15 pound braided line, 14 to 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, maybe three or four feet of it. And the plugs we're throwing are all fire tiger color, Sabeel stick shads, Rapala original countdown, anything fire tiger, that orange belly, green sides, the black bars, it looks like you're matching the hatch. For peacocks, you know, I like to throw a topwater plug, uh, some kind of prop bait or a walk the dog style bait. Mainly, I mean, you could catch them on that, but mainly to, to locate fish. You know, they'll come swipe at it, bust on it, and I'll throw that down and grab a, either a, a diving plug or a soft plastic or something like that, or even a fly sometimes. That way, you know, they won't swipe at that as bad. It gives them a better chance to grab it and you actually catch the fish. You can catch fish here all year round. It doesn't get too cold, but the peacocks and the cichlids, all the exotics tend to slow down in the winter time. They, uh, they're just surviving. Um, you can still catch good largemouth in the winter time though, and bluegill, um, probably June through September, maybe early or late May, depending on the weather. Um, Usually the fishing gets good as soon as we have about a week of 75 to 80 degree weather. The fishing, the, the peacock bass fishing will really pick up. Today started off very still, muggy, hot this morning. Um, made for really easy fly fishing conditions. As the day went on, we thought it was going to rain. Some storms moved around us. We got lucky, stayed, stayed out of the weather. Um, got windy on us though. It, you know, it's probably blowing. 10 to 15, gust to 20, which makes very difficult fly fishing, but we started throwing plugs, kept catching fish. I wish the sun would have been out a little more maybe for the peacocks, but uh, we worked through it and caught a lot of fish. Mr. Cichlid. This is Hollywood here. Show off all his colors. Ow. Pretty fish. Bright orange belly and a mouthful of teeth. Do not want to lip these guys. They will hurt you. Yeah, we would let him go. Oh, he was ready to go. Probably shouldn't have used the bigger rod. There he is. Oh, nice fish. go little bigger fish not a peacock but nice large mouth that fish are healthy down here plenty of stuff for them to eat Captain Josh methodically works the canal banks and structure using his trolling motor and alternating from spin to fly tackle.
Fox fight. Like nobody's business. And he's not even that big. Not even that big. Come here. All right. Mr. Peacock Bass on the fly. Bright sharp, pretty fish. On the straw boss again. They like that silly fly. That sun hit that iridescent fan. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Wind and weather did not seem to bother the bite as we moved through canals catching fish after fish. Here, Mr. Peacock. In the boat. Thank you, sir. Got a little breezy on us here, making it quite difficult. But fish don't seem to mind it. There, you can see that hump on his head. That's the male. When they start to spawn, that hump will get real big, kind of funky looking. Very nice. That's a bass. Big boy. Go big mama. Join us again next week for another episode of Captain's Tales and try one more fishing spot online. Log on to www.captainstales.com. Closed captioning brought to you by Moonlighter Push Poles and Nets. Join us again next week for another episode of Captain's Tales and try one more fishing spot online. Log on to www.captainstales.com.